I'm Daniela Perdomo. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Gotenna. We build mobile mesh networks. And I'm here because I want to explore some ideas with the blockchain community. And yes, great. So let's, let's start. <laughs> all right. So we are, we're all here because we believe in a decentralized internet. But there's two things that are kind of funny to me about, that, about, these, about the conversations about a decentralized internet, which is one is that we presume connectivity. And we shouldn't, because there's still a lot of places without coverage, as we know. And moreover, we talk about a decentralized internet that is still generally being built on centralized pipes. So you know, th th this, is, this is what I want to explore. And you know, I think part of the reason we don't think so much about a decentralized internet being somewhat at odds with building it on centralized pipes is that centralized connectivity does some pretty incredible things for us. So I could have you know, my iPhone and FaceTime a friend in Hong Kong halfway across the world. It's going through all these switching networks, a heavy infrastructure, infrastructure transoceanic cables, and finally hitting a, a mobile station and going back to my friend's phone all in under a second. So it does these magical things. but. Uh, in spite of everything that it can do, when you put that same uh, infrastructure on top of a more local situation, it doesn't seem that efficient anymore, right? So imagine you want to text somebody who just stepped outside into the parking lot. Why is it going to a mobile repeater? Why isn't it just going straight to that person, right? So, you know, there's other downsides to central connectivity. Too, if too many people on a network, services degraded for everyone else, right? Just like any other urban infrastructure. Uh, and in extraordinary situations, uh, we see the biggest problem inherent in centralized communication infrastructure, which is a central point of failure. So five years ago, uh, what made me start thinking about this and working on what became Gotenna was Hurricane Sandy. So I live in New York, and five years ago, uh, there was we were south of power and south of service, right? And I, I thought, why is it that our communications networks tend to fail us when we need the most. And you know, when 25% of people lost connectivity for days, in some cases for weeks, you know you really have a problem. And that really begged the question for me, why can't we communicate using the phones we have on us all the time? Why can we only plug into connectivity? Why can't we just create it on our own? And this is you know, a good moment to point out that our phones are designed not to enable direct decentralized phone-to-phone -phone communication at any useful distance. I think we can all agree Bluetooth does not do that for us, right? Um, and I'm not going to get into the political economy of why that might be, uh, because uh, that'll take forever. But you know, there are three mobile carriers in the US. And in every other market or region, it's kind of the same situation. So you know, if we can imagine a, a, a world where we could create our own connectivity using our phones and other computing devices, you know, what might that decentralized system be good at? And as it turns out, a decentralized communications network tends to be precisely good at what a centralized communications network is not. So it can increase resiliency, it can increase access, and it can also ensure neutrality, right? Because there's no top-down control. So now let's think again. We want to text somebody who just stepped outside the museum to you know, grab a coffee or a cigarette break or whatnot. Um, instead of going through all this infrastructure that does not seem like you know, the most efficient way to do it, you could communicate in an efficient direct link. We know that the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line, so you could create that. And if we can start to conceive as, of our phones as connection points themselves, then we can leverage all the phones in this room, all the phones in the streets outside, and communicate not just phone to phone, but phone to phone to phone to phone, right? We could create a parallel communications network that's available all the time because it's powered by us, right? It's people powered, it's bottom up. Uh, and you know, it would run parallel to centralized connectivity, so it'd be available when nothing else is, when everything else is down. And we could, cre we could create communications networks that could provide connectivity, essential connectivity, to communities and cities. So of course, this is a mesh network. But I want to specifically talk about um, something a little different, uh, which is a MANET. So a mobile ad hoc network, that's what we're working on at Gotenna, is, uh, is basically a network solution for, that addresses mobility. So a mesh network is not necessarily a MANET, but uh, it can be. And so, a, a lot of the mesh networks you might be familiar with tend to be pretty fixed. So if you have a Wi-Fi mesh router system in your house, 
you know, you know where the routers are, they know where they are, and that's how they coordinate, you know, their meshing. Uh, you might also know about a community Wi-Fi network that's also still pretty much based uh, on nodes that are entirely stationary. In a mobile ad hoc network, in a Manit, uh, by definition, the network topology is changing all the time. By definition, you can never count on a node being there or being in the same place ever again. And so it's just much harder. And you know the possibility of Manitz is huge, but for a very long time, this technology has been relegated to really expensive military tactical radio systems. So we're talking, I mean, if I could afford one and bring one to show you, it's massive. Uh, it guzzles power like none other. You have to basically go to Quantico to know how to use it. And I'm not joking when I say that fully loaded, these systems can cost $20,000 to $300,000 per user, right? So they're not really accessible to anyone. And you know what good is that, right? You know, I mean, our, probably our special forces would say otherwise, but you know, it's pretty limited to specialized users, right? So when we set out to build a mobile manet that would actually be accessible to most everybody, we had to, you know, deal with the laws of physics, and we honed in on some core design principles, you know, to, uh, and so we focused on small size, low power, low cost, and you know, achieving really great propagation. So what that means is like the best performance in the most environments and practical range, again, not like Bluetooth shouting range. So um, as a company, what we're doing is we're building mobile manets uh, focused very specifically on short burst data, delay tolerant over pretty great distances, miles and miles between each hop in certain situations. And 10 days ago, uh, we released this little thing called Gotenna Mesh, which is the first uh, time that Manic technology is accessible to anyone with a smartphone, which is 3.5 billion people. So this little thing is 85 bucks. You, get it, you set it up in under a minute, and you can create your own network anywhere using your phone. And not only do you, can you use it with your phone, you can also use it without a phone. You can drop it and breadcrumb it and create pop-up mesh networks, which I think is a really powerful idea. Um, and, but I think what's exciting about mesh networks generally is that if we can unlock the power of what's already in your pocket, which is your phone, we can create a new mobile infrastructure that's literally as modular as we are. You need connectivity, you make it. It's there, right? You're not plugging into it. And you know, with uh, more people <laughs> logging onto the internet, it, we can harness that growth. But it's not just about creating a parallel off-grid communication network, although that is powerful in and of itself. We can also augment existing systems and extend the practical edge of connectivity. Some of you might know this as extending the last mile. Um, and so we can intersect with existing communication systems. So for instance, Gotenna Mesh, right out of the box, you can gateway into normal SMS. But with developer integrations, you can also you know, interconnect into Wi-Fi, satellites, uh, you know, LTE. And so, you know, I think what, what, what we might be able to really do is, you know, move towards uh, a world where we're using mesh networks for local communication, right, because that's what it's best for, and we're freeing up the central pipes to do what it's really good at, like FaceTiming your friend in Hong Kong. And, you know, I think we're all here because we believe in a future where, you know, we want anyone or anything to create the connectivity they need in a distributed fashion. But, you know, how are we going to get there? And that's what I'm excited to explore with all of you. So here's a little bit of context. So we started shipping Gotenna Mesh 10 days ago. Uh, we, three days, four days ago, I think, uh, put up this uh, network map where we're asking our users, or, you know, our first users, to say, where are you? Like, where might you be using Gotenna Mesh? So this is what the United States looked like this morning. Uh, this is what the Bay Area looked like this morning. And then if you filter it out for people who specifically said that they were setting up Gotenna mesh nodes as stationary, always powered on units, either with solar or like hooked into an outlet that other people could use, uh, we have three very generous individuals <laughs> in the Bay Area. So you know, my question to the blockchain community, because I think this is what you guys are really good at, is how do we incent participation in the mesh network so that it can become the mesh network that we all think you know, it could be? That, you know, that everyone's been talking about in white papers for a long time. And so here are some you know, research questions you know, addressing coordination and scarcity um, that I think the blockchain community could help us you know, answer. So one is, obviously, we have a zero start problem. So great, we have thousands of first users. You know, uh, how do you incent enough participation before the, uh, before the mesh network has become you know, uh, a scalable, everyday thing uh, today? Right. So that's, that's one question. The other is coverage. You know, any communications network needs nodes. So for as magical as privately and automatically routing messages through all the people around you is, that's what mesh networking is, and we've built it, and it's accessible to you now, it's not going to be any good to you if there's no one between you and point B. 
right? So how do we incent people to set up units, as many of them as possible? Uh, the other is capacity, and that's related. So you know, uh, you know, you might you can have coverage, but if you don't have enough capacity in the places where there's more traffic, uh, you're not you're also you know not going to get your message through. So how do we incent people putting up devices in the right places at the right time to handle you know modulating modulating uh, volumes of traffic? Uh, and then there's power. Power is a very finite resource. So um, in, in a communications network to transceive, um, you need power. But in a mesh network, you not just need your, you, you don't just need your own power. You need other people's power. So how do we incent uh, the sharing of energy resources? And spectrum. And spectrum is. You're going to hear someone else say regulatory again on the stage. So spectrum is, by definition, a finite resource. But in addition, it is regulated by the government. So uh, because I don't have $50 billion to go buy white space, our consumer product has to work on public spectrum. Public spectrum is there's tiny little slices that are left over after everything goes to business, government, industrial uses. And by definition, can be used by anyone for anything, anytime. So you know we have artificially constrained our first mesh protocol to focus on short burst delay tolerance data, but if we want to support uh, high bandwidth, persistent communication, how are we going to do that on literally limited spectrum? So one question is, how do we incent you know, communally fair use of a limited spectrum in a decentralized network, right? And maybe as a corollary to that, how might we you know, incent government regulators to release more spectrum for public use? And because probably like a lot of you, I'm not so sure how fast uh, government regulators move, how might we incent license, owners of licensed spectrum, so owners and users of licensed spectrum, to share with the mesh network? And you know, related to that, because mesh networks are, by definition, local communication networks, how do we bridge the global communications gap, right? Like we can't, you might have a great mesh in you know, the Bay Area, but you're not going to communicate to Tokyo. How do you cross the Pacific, right? How do we incent people to build the uh, bridges that can, uh, that can close those gaps? And you know, uh, the, the wrinkle, of the extra complexity in a off-grid, completely mobile mesh network is that we we need to find out not just how to validate the integrity of the network when nodes are, by definition, completely offline, always moving. Maybe when they're connected, they're connected for a sliver of time, and they're offline maybe forever again. But we also need to you know, figure out how to validate that what's happening in the real world is what's showing up on the network. How do we make sure you know, uh, that we can trust what the network is coming back to us with? So how do we incent and validate integrity in a completely decentralized, mobile, off-grid mesh network? And th that's why I'm here. You know, I don't have the answers to all these questions. We're working on them right now. Um, but I think that the blockchain community could, show, could hold uh, some of the keys to scaling mesh networks, whether it's you know, Gotenna's or others. And, um, well, first of all, we're, we're hosting a hackathon, an upcoming hackathon with uh, Blockstack, so sign up for that. Email me directly, join our public message board, because you don't want to centralize a conversation about decentralization. But you know, I think, ultimately, if we, if we believe in a decentralized internet, then we need to think about what a truly decentralized internet requires. And I think that requires a scalable, decentralized connectivity layer. And of course, I think that mesh networks are going to be an essential part of that future. Thank you. <laughs>